Greetings, brothers and sisters of the secular order and other persons who may be interested in uh, what I have to say and what it means to be a discalced Carmelite secular order member. As, as I mentioned in the introductory videos, I'm going to make reference to a little book that I wrote in 2012, the name, or 2009, and the name of that book was Welcome to the Secular Order of Discalced Carmelites. And I want to make, uh, the, the, as I mentioned, that book covers and addresses fundamental issues of identity, identity for discernment, identity for formation, identity for practice, and three stages, you might say, of uh, the vocation to be a member of the Discalced Carmelite Secular Order. Um, in this book, I begin the book, if, if you have a copy of the book, you'll be able to follow along. If you don't have a copy of the book, I think my explanations and my talks will be uh, sufficient or helpful uh, without the book, but uh, it's probably good to have the book, and if you need to get a copy of the book, you can get it from ICS Publications in Washington, D.C. Um, I begin to, by pointing out that the point of the presentation, the point of my discussion is what are the principles that we use to begin with? What are the principles to use to discern if a person has a vocation to the second order? This is useful uh, for the person who is applying, but it's very useful for the council of the community that has the responsibility for discerning the answer to the question, does this person have a vocation to be a member of this religious order? Um, and that will become clear as we go along. In the beginning, I point out um, a, a little summary that I say, a little definition, you might say, that I give to what is a member of the Carmelite order. This, this definition, this description, descriptive definition, um, applies not just to seculars, but it applies to nuns and applies to friars. The point of the discerning is in each, in each category, friars, nuns, and, and seculars, there's other requirements, but they're all can be found in, in in these basic requirements. Let me read the first of all what I say is the uh, the identity, the identity of the person who belongs in this order. I say I would describe a member of the secular order, but again it applies to the friar order and to the nun order. Secular order of Our Lady of Mount Carmel uh, uh, as a practicing member of the Catholic Church who under the protection of Our Lady of Mount Carmel and inspired by the teaching, inspired by the Saint Teresa of Jesus and Saint John of the Cross makes the commitment to the order to seek the face of God for the sake of the Church and the world. I'll repeat that again. I will also write it in the, some, in the description of this, this uh, talk. A member of the secular order of Our Lady of Mount Carmel and St. Teresa of Jesus is a practicing member of the Catholic Church who, under protection of Our Lady of Mount Carmel and inspired by St. Teresa of Jesus and St. John of the Cross, makes the commitment to the order to seek the face of God for the sake of the church and the world. Now I will go through over the next couple of days, the next couple of conferences, um, I will go through each point of this definition to try to understand how does this fit in. But we'll start with the most basic. A practicing member of the Catholic Church. Um, 
by this I mean the Roman Catholic Church. Now in the Roman Catholic Church there are different rites. There's the Latin rite, Ruthenian rite, Maronite rite, Byzantine rite. There's, there's different rites that exist within the Catholic Church. Um, and uh, a, a Catholic is someone who accepts the authority of the Bishop of Rome, of the Pope, as supreme authority in the church. Um, so a, mem a, a, mem a, 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 a member, a practicing member of the Catholic Church. So it has to be a person that who apply. The person who applies has to be a person who who is practicing his or her faith in the Roman Catholic Church being able to participate in the sacramental life of the church. That's a practicing Catholic. A practicing Catholic is one who participates free in a good conscience in the sacramental life of the church. Is able to go to communion, participates by going to mass. Now this might seem, well this might seem, to, in many places this might seem more obvious. But in some places, it's not so obvious. And the distinctions that we are necessary to make in what is possible and what is not possible. To be a member of the order is to be a member of the, a Roman Catholic entity. The order is, uh, is directly under the guidance of the Holy Father, of, of the Pope. One has to recognize his authority and everything that that means in terms of the practice of the faith as uh, as essential. Now, in some cases, there are people who are not able to participate legally in the sacramental life of the church. If a person is unable to participate in the sacramental life of the church for reasons of divorce and remarriage, not just divorce, divorce and remarriage, or someone who is living uh, a way of life, and living in the circumstances of life that are against the teaching of the church, or is, I would say, including those who are able unable to participate because of political uh, beliefs that put them at odds with the moral teaching of the Roman Catholic Church. Anyone who's at, at anyone who's not in accord with the teaching of the Roman Catholic Church, both dogmatic and moral, is not able to be a member of the order a member of the order that professes to be Roman Catholic. Now, in some cases, for example, a person who is divorced but not remarried, well, that person is easily able to participate in the, life, in the sacramental life of the church um, because they have they, they, they have not remarried, they're not living in, in a way that's contrary to the teaching of the church, they're able to participate. If they're able to go to communion, they're able to be a Carmelite. If they're not able to go to communion, they're not able to be a Carmelite. In some, in, in some countries, though, there's even more question that can be confusing. For example, in some countries, there are prayer groups that uh, use or appeal to the teaching of Saint Teresa of Jesus, the spirituality of Saint Teresa of Jesus, spirituality of Saint John of the Cross, spirituality of Saint Therese, and they, they, that appeals to certain people, but they're not Catholic. They they belong to uh, the Protestant Church, uh, or, or another form of belief, but they're attracted to the spirituality of Saint Teresa of Jesus, or Saint John of the Cross, or Saint Therese. Well, they're not able to commit themselves to the order. They're not able to be, they're not practicing Catholics. They may love St. Therese, they may love St. Teresa, but they're not practicing Catholics. 
we are taught anybody can follow the spirituality we're not talking about following the spirituality we're talking about becoming a member of the order so the first category and the category that I'd like to try to be clear about today is the category of a practicing Catholic if there are any questions or comments that people would like to make they can make so those uh, give those questions or make those observations in the comments don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you would like to subscribe um, then the alarm button that's next to this describe uh, to the subscribe button the alarm, and then also hit the like button if just to let people know let me know that people are following this um, God bless you and St. Saint, Saint Teresa of Jesus, pray for us.